Hi everybody, welcome back to Borderlands 3. My name is Mikey Dubs, and today we are on the hunt for the God Roll King's Call Days 3. And we have ourselves an almost God Roll King's Call right here. 66,000 damage fire King's Call. We're looking for that 69,000 damage one. I do have myself a 69,000 damage Queen Call Corrosive right here. So this is what we're looking for for the King's Call. And it's a 6% drop chance, followed by a 1 in 3 chance for the parts we need, and another 1 in 3 chance for another part we need. So, that puts us at a pretty low drop chance. Now, I did, however, watch a quick video about how to bypass one of these immunity phases on Tyrion the Destroyer. So, if I walk over here to the side, do, do two attacks, I believe that I can skip the immunity phase just like that. Gotta make sure that I kill this part of the boss phase. Activate my action skill. Get to immunity phase. Reload me. Get to this next immunity phase. Oh, and we didn't actually get it off quite right. Let's see here. Okay, we do get that. I'm not sure if this will actually be faster if I don't land myself some critical strikes. Here we go. I do, however, get to skip all the immunity phases by doing it this way. So she bends down. I don't have to climb up on her back. I can just go like this. Put you down to the final immunity phase. There we go. Get one kill for my Schluter. One kill for the Schluter. And then she's going to walk all the way to the edge of the stage. We might have to reset this one. Yeah. Oh, man. It's my first time trying the... Oh, thanks for the revive, Pat. It's my first time trying the... The immunity phase skip in that way i'm gonna have to figure out a way to make it more efficient i could try you know using my monarch here to make it a little bit more efficient i think that could work maybe a little bit better go ahead give me that revive let's see how successfully we can skip this immunity phase let's try this something here so can i there we go i can i can sneak some bullets in between I believe my Schluter was active still. Not quite. Okay, it's so not the best first kill there. But we are trying to increase our efficiency as we go. No king or queen's call. Grab my iridium. And keep it moving. Okay, attempt number two. We are on our 64th run. Let's try to use a monarch here and see if it will increase our efficiency. So we drop down. Get our bipod out. Let's activate our action skill to get through this first immunity phase. There we go. Move to the right. We want our action skill to actually go away here. As she turns around, I don't have to climb up. I can shoot between the tentacles. Just like so. Activate my action skill. This might be a little bit better. Get a, a fresh reload off. Act action skill. There we go. That's a lot more efficient than before. Huge, huge, huge. Kill you. Since we can. Why not? Get back our action skill. We gotcha. Hopefully she doesn't do anything crazy. And that's a fast kill. That's that's a lot faster than before. Now that we know we can skip the immunity phase by simply just shooting her. A Merv Hex. It's not Merv Tacular. Which is a little bit sad, but it is a Merv Hex. We'll take it. A Hunter Seeker with on grenade throw. We're definitely taking that. And that's our new grenade of choice. Beautiful. Resonant back cam and an ASMD. Okay. Icebreaker launch pad. No, I think I'm going to stick with what I got. Okay, very cool. That's that's going to be an extremely efficient run. The more of those we can get, the better. So 65 runs. Again, the God Roll King's Call, 69,000 damage. And to show you guys what I've actually been doing a little bit off cam, I've actually been grinding away my Iridium. If you see this bottom right corner, I've got 16,000 Iridium now doing Voracious Canopy Farming. So whenever I do get the God Roll King's Call, I can bring it to the vending machine or the, the Crazy Earl's re, Crazy Earl's Reroller and make good use of it by make, make good use of my rhythm by getting the, the reroll that I want. Okay, so we gotta want to make sure that we get as many, many of these monarch shots as monarch monarch shots as we can. Stuttering Stanley, gotcha. This is the important one. Looks like she's not going to do what we want her to, but that's okay. We still, I think, we'll have an efficient clear here. There we go. The shot's off. 
Ooh, we do go down. That's a little bit rough. Pet, come save me. Thank you. Well, I cannot see where any of these enemies are at. She's going to the edge of the stage. I don't want that to happen. Reload me. Come on, immunity phase. Immunity phase. Okay, she's gonna go. She's gonna jump off the edge and do her major attack. That's okay. We have to figure out a way to make this consistently efficient. Because that our last kill was really, really quick. She should come back here. Come on back, Tyreen. There we go. Enter an immunity phase, please. Just like so. Shoot between the tentacles. And I didn't quite reach it that time. That's a jump. Man, that is not working. Maybe I gotta be on this side of her. There we go. Yeah, I think I gotta be on that side of her. Schluter active. Or Schluter not active. Is there not an enemy somewhere? Oh, there. Right there. Dang, I actually got my Schluter active before that went off. That's huge. Sick. Cryostone pullout method. We also are looking for a, a, a stone artifact with Commander Planetoid. That can, that can actually boost up my Iridium farming as well. Okay. 150 over 90 tidal wave is pretty insane. Okay. We can keep it moving. Again, we're, we're trying to maximize our efficiency more than we currently are. Because I don't want her to jump off the stage. I got to figure out a way to do it. 66. This is the run. All right, I believe in you, Tyreen. Don't do anything. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Hop down. Oscar Grenage. Enter fade away. I, I think I need to time out my reloads a little bit better. I think that'll be kind of the ticket for us here. Plus Grenage. Okay, reload me. Activate fade away. Reload now before my fade away ends. There we go. That's exactly how we got to do it. It's time our reloads a little bit better. And we will be much, much happier with the results, I believe. Okay, right there. We're going to make sure we reload. I don't have Schluter active. Let's get it. Make sure it is. And finish off Tyreen. There's an efficient kill. Beautiful. That's about as efficient as we can possibly get. Very nice. If you guys missed the last episode, I actually found a nice spark plug launch pad for my Moe's. So I gave it to her and I replaced my old one because my new one had cryo damage on it. If you don't know what the spark plug launch pad does, it, it helps mows by giving her a ton of synergy with her blood letter class mod so if you guys haven't seen the frozen snowshoe build on mows it's an absolute blast 67 we're officially two-thirds of the way there to, to 100 of course oh, let's go Glad to have you back. keep it efficient keep it smart let's toss a grenade activate action skill make sure we are reloaded as much as possible so instead of climbing up her legs, instead of doing that, we are going to go for the shot on this right-hand side. Try to get her action skill back. Did we got it? Activate action skill. Okay, re uh, reload. Oh, we messed it up. Okay, maybe we... I think... I think... Yeah, we're still good. We're still good. Beautiful. Oh, we can actually get her into her... Into her... Immunity phase just without fade away there, which is quite nice. I think that might even be the more consistent method is not even worry about it. Nova Bunner's Mind Melt Deathless. Now, I've been getting a lot of great comments, including the one that told me that I don't I can skip the immunity phase. People also let me know that the Blade Fury can skip the immunity phase. And the, the support on the, the first episode, I haven't... I recorded the second episode and put it out before I read the comments from the first episode, so. Thank you very much for the support, and you guys letting me know, like, hey, this is going to be a tough farm. Like, we're shocked that you're doing this, you know, I've been, but it's really cool to see people reaching out. I didn't think this series was going to get very many views at all. And, you know, the fact that it, I got a 1 out of 10 on my YouTube from the first episode is an incredible, incredible. I'm, I'm going to be mixing this in with some Roguelands content. I'm just really liking Borderlands right now in general. All right, let's focus up. Make sure we land these crits. There we go. I, that This is going to be a, a rough one. Definitely going to be a rough one here. Yep. She's slamming. She's slamming. Yeah. 
This is going to be a bit of a rough one. I think this actually might be a reset. Oh, maybe not. Reload me. Beautiful. Don't, don't walk to the edge of the stage. Don't walk to the edge of the stage. There we go. It's actually not bad. As long as we stick to the side, stick to the plan, I think that we should be fine. Cryo Stone Victory Rush makes some sense. What about a King's Call? Azar, the King's Call only has a 6% 6% chance to drop. And again, after the 6% chance, I believe it's it's 1 in 3. And we can go check it out right now, actually. So the I think it's the hammer and the magazine. The hammer and the magazine have a one in three chance, respectively, to drop. So if you take if you take six percent times one point three or times uh, zero point three, you get two. So it's whatever two, whatever one third of two is. So it's about a point seven percent chance or point six eight percent chance. So it's it's less than a one percent chance to get the drop we want. Let's just make sure we keep our counter going. 69, let's roll. So it's less than a 1% chance. It's about a 0.7% chance to get the drop we want. Reload me. Get to the right-hand side so we get access to that beautiful easy crit. Reload as much as possible. Phase, phase or fade away. There we go. Ooh, bad reload. I should have kept shooting. Bad reload, but I think we still made it. Yep. There's actually a some forgiveness there. I like that. There's some, there's some forgiveness there. Reload before activating fadeaway is definitely the way. And then kill Tyrene. That's an efficient kill. Beautiful. Back ham. A Maggie. Action skill active Maggie. Actually, let's go check out my Maggie and see how it compares. All right, so... Mine has higher damage. This one has some other good stats, but I can always reroll the anointment. I'm going to keep the one I've got. L Shock, Thunderball Fist, a Rocketeer. King's Call? No. Okay, we can keep it going. So we are expecting to get the God Roll King's Call in about. I mean, it's going to be over 100 runs. I mean, if, if our odds. If our odds are. As advertised, it's gonna be it should be over 100 runs, but you never know. It could be this run right here. The monarch is popping off too, and someone recommended that I put on the pearl of ineffable knowledge so that I could speed up my clears. I th I think that could be really good, except I want to keep the schluter because I do need more world drop items. So I'm gonna be sticking with the schluter for the foreseeable future. Reload me. Ooh, that was a waste. Come on. There's the ground slam attack. You go down. Don't walk to the edge of the stage, please. Thank you. Reload and then activate fade away. Much more efficient this way. She can become targetable. Doesn't look like it. Let's kill one enemy. Make sure we get our bipod out. Reload. Ensure that our Schluter remains active, and then go for the kill. Beautiful. Definitely speeding up our clears now that we know we don't have to climb up her back. That is for sure. We're also looking for Bounty Hunter class mods. I do have an Unforgiven already with 400 plus critical hit damage, so we don't need anything more. So we're looking for Bounty Hunter class mods, and we're getting some more Iridium from these farms as well, which is super nice. 71. So yeah, keeping the Schluter on is going to help us get a ton more world drops, and that includes the Bounty Hunter class mod, which is our number one for bossing. Alright, drop down. Do I even need to activate Fade Away for this first phase? It de yeah, it definitely looks like I do. It's not very consistent without it. There we go. Toss a Grenage. Yeah, because if you don't do it fast enough, she, she goes into her laser attack, which... Does slow down the clear a little bit. Okay, drop down, homie. Thank you. Appreciate you. Oh, wow, this is a bit of a weird angle. Okay, reload before activating fade away. 
reload once it gets the halfway point of her health bar and then she should be available again that is peak efficiency right there kill an enemy while we're waiting to help our action skill come up back a little bit faster okay we should be getting it there nice and our action skill is up we are completely reloaded our sluter is active i just killed an enemy so we're, we're chilling beautiful i'll spend a guardian token I do have my guardian token or my my guardian rank active for this challenge for for this farm just because I'm already doing so so much. Ooh, one key, beautiful. Um, it's already a really tough farm, so I I, I kind of would like to you know use the guardian rank that I have earned in order to keep it going. Yeah, let's keep it moving now. No king's call on that run. 72, this one's for you. This will be our 10th run of this recording. And as long as we keep it efficient, we should be going much faster than before. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. <laughs> Sounds like a uh, god of war. Get shredded, homie. So again, run over to this right side so I get access to her eyeball. Don't knock me off the stage. Wait for a fadeaway to be up. Reload. Reload again. Wow, the fact that she's not targetable here makes me a little bit... I, I That, I'm not quite sure why that's happening. Okay. Try to get her action skill back up. Beautiful. Okay. We should have one more immunity phase to get through. Activate Schluter. Ooh, we actually don't get it there. Crazy. Shoot there. Activate Schluter. And not the most efficient kill, but we still got it done pretty quick. I think... Oh, we didn't have our bipod out. That's why right there. No bipod. Okay. Very cool. And a King's Call, maybe? Yeah, no, no king's call, which is a little bit insane. We still have not seen one, but it is what it is. I mean, I guess at, at 10 runs, we we don't necessarily expect to see one. Whatever 100 divided by 6 is. But we haven't seen a queen's call either, so. Got a little bit unlucky so far, but I have a great feeling about on, this run right here. Here comes the god, the god roll. Please, oh, please, oh, please. I was using the King's Call for fun against Grave Ward, and it was actually doing the best job of any of my weapons against Grave Ward, which is kind of cool. Okay, reload me. Okay, one more reload. Yeah, it looks like if... I'm trying to figure out what is causing that... to behave slightly differently. We attacked. She's ready to be hit again. Into immunity phase you go. Let's destroy these Varkid pods. There we go. Pretty simple, actually. That's a much quicker farm. Black hole. Unforgiven. What's the crit chance on it? Mine's better. Again, you really only use the Unforgiven for its crit chance. Star Helix. Ruby's Wrath. Okay, let's go next. 74 uh we're gonna be getting to 100 relatively soon i mean is it is it tw is it really 25 runs per video i think we are getting more than that so actually we should hopefully we can get to 100 runs this video let's see how fast we can do it let's try to push and see how fast we can go I, i've actually uh you know in in my regular life things have been going pretty okay i've been i'm on a new schedule where i'm actually hitting up the Hitting up Planet Fitness early in the morning. Oh, we need to make sure we get this. Oh, not good. Okay, we got we got that done. Just a little bit slow. She should bend down though. There we go. Activate my actions. Go here. We got to that one in time. She become targetable. Nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, rip you.
It should be it. Nice, 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 nice. So yeah, I'm hitting up the gym, and I'm I'm trying to do a no days off, a no days off, caustic coast launch pad, uh, strategy, and I'm doing a four a four day split. Cause I'm enjoying being at the gym for like you know not not a f like an insanely long workout, especially because if you go early in the morning, there's really no wait times. So I've been doing uh, back and buys one day, chest and tries another day, shoulders and core a third day, and then a full leg day. And it's been feeling good, you know. It's been feeling good. You're getting getting tired early on in the morning, but then coming back and taking that shower. It's just it it really does help juice me up and i got my semester my second to last semester at university starting you now me just being behind on my peers i'm you know 27 years old still in the university getting my bachelor's degree I, I took a little pit stop over in the military that's a that's a really bad fadeaway right there i think yeah she's not going to be targetable here not right away at least that's okay Okay, drop a full mag. And she will be targetable here. This is an important one. There we go. Huge. I activate my Schluter. And then by the time she comes targetable here, we should be able just to rip. Just rip for the kill here. Nice. So I'm starting my second last semester at university. And I have my, my big senior research class this semester or so. Gonna be doing a lot of library time. Still, I think daily videos will still be coming out. It's not gonna be oh, dead eye. It's not gonna be like the three videos a day, especially because I was like mega grinding. You know, and that kind of it. It is really hard to keep up that that upload schedule. I'll be uh, completely honest with you. But my hope is that I can keep daily uploads coming out, especially because Rogue Land's got a new update, and I'm enjoying that. My my biggest issue with Rogue Land's right now is that the the videos that get the most views are the ultra randomized ones everyone really likes those ultra randomized ones where the guns are just kind of like insane and i get a little bit overwhelmed playing that mode i don't necessarily like playing it but people just they they love clicking on it so it's it's tough i think i will be putting more of those out let's drop it in let's drop a reload and then enter my fade away there we go immunity phase me beautifully done that is how we do it right there that's i think that's max efficiency try to get to the immunity phase with our first mag here get a kill and they kill the tyree and the destroyer that is max efficiency right there oh looks like we might not have we might not have had sluter active spark plug rocket boots okay we gather our iridium real quick okay and go next But the schedule is going pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. And I, I've been getting, you know, on average, more views per video, which is always nice. Always, always nice. So, let's drop this. Now, if you guys don't know, actually, I have a new most viewed uh, video on the channel. For the longest time, it was one of my, my first randomized Roguelands runs. Well, for the longest time, it was a WA 2000 Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 uh, nuke. Oh, that's a terrible. That's terrible right there. Yep. That's that's not gonna get the job done. We're gonna have to have to wait for the next phase here probably. Yep. But then it became a it became a a Rogue Lands video. But now my most viewed video on the channel is actually a League of Legends Swarm video by a lot. It, it, my first ever video with thirty thousand views is pretty sick. I need to get a kill real quick. There we go, got you. And then Tyrene goes down. So, so 30,000 views on that video, which is, I mean, that is just insane to me. A recharger. Instantly begins recharging when broken. Cooldown 20 seconds. That's pretty cool. Atom Bomb Commander Planetoid. That actually sounds really good for a... For a... Gamma Burst build, where I try to make my pet as strong as possible, because Commander Planetoid has a chance to make my radiation stronger. Okay. Very nice. Let's go to the next round. Next round. 78. I'd have no doubt in my mind that this is, this is the most efficient method. I think 
even if I had the Blade Fury and like a full Blade Fury setup, the amount of time that I would spend trying to set up the Blade Fury setup would slow down the farm. So, I think I'm on the most efficient path. Which feels good. It's a little strafe action. Under the side. I'm not sure if I could get this done with any gun besides the Monarch. When it comes to like the fade away. So, get a couple shots off until I see fade away. Reload. Enter fade away. Get her down to half. Reload. Should become targetable again. That is how you do it right there. That is how you do it. I don't think that's RNG based either. I think that's consistent. All right, bipod. Get her into an immunity phase. Oh, what didn't work? Come on, immunity phase me. There we go. Slowed me. It's already active. Nice, actually. Not bad. Not bad at all. Let's go see my loot. Cryostone commander. This is what we're looking for right here. The Cryo Stone Commander Planetoid. That's going to greatly increase the amount of speed we can, or amount of Iridium we can farm. Because the Cryo gives, it, it gives us Cryo damage on our melees. When, when we when we smack Iridium, that's going to, the act the bonus Cryo damage counts as another melee strike. So it gives us more. And then the Commander Planetoid will roll a random element, which will also give us, and it might roll Cryo, which doesn't give us bonus Iridium if, it's, if it is Cryo. But every every five seconds it'll it'll re swap. So that's amazing. That's our new official iridium farming relic. Right? That's exactly what we were looking for. Cosmic Stalker. I think we will be skipping this one, unfortunately. And I still have not seen in a front loader. Uh, front loader with radiation. I think I have a front loader radiation. Let me just check because the front loader is also used for iridium farming. Let's see. I've got a front loader corrosive. I don't think actually front loader radiation is actually worse because you you, you use the uh, under fifty percent UU rad anoints while you're doing iridium farming. So I'm very happy to get those those items that make my iridium farming faster because I I don't mind iridium farming if I've got nothing really else going on and I want to get like rest my voice and I don't really you know it's it's hard to keep up the energy for so long but. All right, let's keep it going. Oh, Tyreen's... I think Tyreen's just a little bit upset that we are figuring out a really efficient way to clear her. All right, let's do this the right way here. You ready? All right, shoot until you see fade away active. Reload. Fade away. Get to halfway. Reload. Keep shooting. Boom, just like that. That is peak efficiency. She goes back down. Try to get there without fade away. I can't I can use fade away here. A little bit early. I should have not done it that in that order, but here we are. And we got it anyway. I don't think we have to be so so picky about that last little bit because you, we can burn through it pretty quickly. It's hard for me to look go past these. Ooh. That's a nice dead eye with weapon damage on it. We'll take it for now. Kazar, Bounty Hunter. Let's see. No, it's not going to be good enough, unfortunately. A Hex, not good enough. Loot expanding pull-out method. No, thank you. Okay, let's roll out. Still no King's Calls at all. And that, that is 17 runs later. That's actually pretty bad luck. Pretty bad luck. At a 6% drop chance. And no Queen's Calls either. That's 12% drop chance. Yeah. Pretty bad luck. Drop down. Gonna get you. Very nice. Head over this way. Drop down. Fire until you see Fade Away come back up. Reload. Use Fade Away to cancel the reload animation. Reload again. Once we get the half. And then keep shooting. Looks like we didn't actually get it done the right way there, but we should be fine here. Fire into UC fadeaway come back up. Reload. Activate fadeaway. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, wait a second. That way my Schluter was getting guaranteed to be active for when I get the kill. That's what I'm talking about right there. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful kill. 
Uh, Maddox Bane, Tunguska, Hornet, Monocle, Widowmaker. Red Fang? Oh, I was looking for action skill damage on it. Didn't see it. Super Ball. Wow, we are getting a pretty unlucky with our farm here, but that's fine. So yeah, after working out has been feeling pretty, pretty nice. The, the last time I... I mean, I've been working out on and off since high school, but the last time I went like super hard working out was when it was probably my my second year in the Marine Corps, or one point, the first year into the second year, and I was working out actually twice a day for about eight months. Um, wait till you see the fadeaway. Use the use the fadeaway animation to cancel ours. A little bit slow on that. I don't think it really matters in the grand scheme of things, though. But I've got a wedding coming up on September 28th, so I want to make sure that I am looking fit for that. Oh, what's up, Tyrene? This one's going to be a little bit ugly, I think. There we go. Don't do anything stupid. Don't think anything, don't think anything I wouldn't do. There we go. Don't walk towards the, the edge of the map. Activate fade away. Get the Schluter going. Electro super badass. Wow. And I'm down. Oh, she's walking towards the edge of the map. Get her. Get her. Don't kill me. Oh, that was close. Okay. Expert Hellshock. Did I get a, a king or queen's call here? Am I in the right mayhem? I am. Okay. I was say, it feels like we've been on the right mayhem. Okay, let's do it. Keep it moving. So yeah, I've got my wedding coming up on September 28th, where I will be a married man. That's that's pretty exciting, and looking forward to that. After this, after I get married, heading back to my semester, going to finish this semester, then next semester, and then I'm looking to get a job in a school as a teacher. Um, I want to teach and I want to coach basketball. I've got a really big passion for basketball. I'm a huge Wizards fan, but I just love sports in general. And right now it's baseball season. The New York Yankees, Aaron Judge just got his 300th homer, the fastest player to get 300 homers. Use fadeaway to cancel the animation. There we go. That's pretty efficient right there. That's nice. Aaron Judge got his 300th homer last night. But yeah, right now, the New York Yankees, they have Juan Soto and Aaron Judge as a one-two punch at the two and three spot hitting. Don't put me down, guys. This is... It's just... It's just really not cool of you to do that. There we go. Tyreen's down. She's going to stay down, I think, for, for the foreseeable future. Not the least efficient kill. Not the most efficient kill. So, typically... So, when I... When I and something really interesting happened yesterday with the New York Yankees. So, Snowdrift, Miss Moxie's Endowment actually makes a ton of sense. We'll pick that up. The Snowdrift and Miss Moxie's Endowment gives it, gives you more XP. You can maybe run that while doing some some slaughter shaft farming on Moe's or something. Anyways. The New York Yankees were playing the MLB's worst team, the Chicago White Sox. And I don't think I've been... I think I got two kills. I'm going to go to 84. We're playing the the worst team in the league, the Chicago White Sox, okay? And it's the third game of the series. It's a 1-1 series. Any, any team could could take the series. And Juan Soto, the two-hitter, has been just clobbering home runs against the White Sox. He hit three home runs in the previous game. So it was the eighth inning. And Juan Soto was up to bat. And the Chicago White Sox actually intentionally walk him. They tell him to take his base. It's the first time he's been intentionally walked all year. Even though he's a great hitter, you'd expect him to get intentionally walked more. But teams can't intentionally walk him because Aaron Judge bats right behind him. And now Aaron Judge is an absolute freak of nature. Um, Aaron Judge bats right behind him. Maybe we can get this immunity phase, hopefully. There we go. So if, if Aaron Judge bats right behind him, it's like you can't really intentionally walk the guy because you're just setting up Aaron Judge for just an absolute freebie, uh, an absolute freebie RBI. But the Chicago White Sox did it anyways. So here comes Aaron Judge up to bat, 
And oh, 54,000. Not quite good enough. On that Rowan's call. Am I am I cursed? There's been not a single king's call or queen's call this entire time. Um, Aaron Judge comes up the bat and he dings a three-run home run, immediately punishing the White Sox for intentionally walking Juan Soto. Just an incredible play, and he got his 300th home run. He had he got a 300 home runs in less than a thousand games played. It was like 950 something. It was no player has ever gotten um, three home runs in under a thousand games. So he's just in a league of his own. And we are, if you're anyone here likes sports or likes baseball, like we are witnessing in our lifetimes, one of the greatest to ever play the sport. Like it's, it's an absolute, it's absolutely insane how good he is at baseball. I right, enter fade away, blaster, give me that reload. Nice, that's what I'm talking about right there. That's beautiful. Shoot some enemies to get back our action skill faster. See, it's already halfway charged. So it should come up a little bit faster this time. There we go. Get a reload. Act, fade away to cancel the reload animation. I still have Schluter active for now. Yeah, I think it was active there. Beautiful. Max efficiency. Pollution's call. Okay. Deadeye. Damage reduction, weapon reload speed, flat off fire rate, no thanks. The dead eye is more about damage, so I would like some damage if I do take one. Come on, game. A Jericho? Someone told me that a Jericho is good for mobbing. It's a times two? Is it, is it always times two? I'm not sure. I'll take it. Yeah, if you guys have stuff for me to be looking out for, let me know. Because the... the my, my ears are always open to that kind of stuff. So yeah, Aaron Judge, incredible player. And the Yankees finally found... So they've had a great one-two punch, okay? Juan Soto into Aaron Judge has been a fantastic one-two punch the whole season. The most devastating one-two punch in Major League Baseball. But they've been struggling with that that cleanup hitter, that number four hitter. Because if guy, if teams would pitch around... By pitch around, I mean... In baseball, it's, it's four balls for a walk and it's, and it's three strikes for a strikeout. Teams would pitch around Soto and Judge pretty heavily, meaning that really give them too much to swing at. And if you end up walking them, like, not a big deal. Because the Yankees have, have not had a good hitter in that next spot. Well, Austin Wells, the team's catcher, has been performing incredibly of late in that cleanup spot. So it's been amazing to watch. Oh, maybe we can still get this. There we go. Yeah, I think we still got this. Aim for Tyreen. Beautiful. Austin Wells has been completely punishing teams for... Ooh, Vladoff weapon damage, COB weapon damage, weapon charge speed. Now I'm good. Mitosis Hex. Yes, that's a great, great find. Mitosis Hex. It's, it's just as good as a weapon magazine size. Vladoff weapon accuracy. Hyperion. It's not as good. It's not as good as my current one. Again, mine... Mine... Bounty Hunter, it can be beat. Weapon handling, weapon damage, and pistol damage, but it needs to be like... like right now, having weapon damage roll on it is is incredible. What about a King's Call, a Queen's Call, uh, or anything? Absolutely none so far. We are officially 38 minutes into this recording, and I have not seen a single King or Queen's Call. I think I might be cursed. I think Randy just wants the series to go on forever. He, too, likes the New York Yankees, so... Soto, Judge, and Wells having a, having a really nice scoring punch. So, we'll see how the Yankees do the rest of the season. They are leading their division. I think they have their best record in baseball, or close to it. They did go on a big slump in the midseason, but they're doing well right now. Very well. I mean, it was the Chicago White Sox, again, the worst team in the MLB, but still. Cancel the animation with fadeaway. Reload one more time. Blaster. That's what I'm talking about right there. Destroy one enemy right there. Okay. Oh, I, I didn't cancel my animation. I did it slightly too soon. Go down. Hopefully, she should become targetable right away here. And Tyreen really does not give you that much room. That much room for mistakes, to be honest with you. Oh, I might go down here. 
Yep, might go down, but Tyreen will also go down. I need a Schluter. There we go. Very random is Moxie's endowment. How about a king or a queen's call? <laughs> I mean, I most of all what I want is a king's call. I've already got my queen's call. Hey, if we don't get it, guess what? We get to farm for it more. <laughs> What's our punishment? More farming? Okay, let's run it back. And more on sports news, the I know not many people are NASCAR fans, but NASCAR is a crazy sport. And NASCAR just did something I don't think they've ever done in their history. I'm not sure exactly uh, if they've ever done this before, but basically in NASCAR, there's playoffs right now, okay? There's the, the way the system is set up, there's playoffs. And you, as you race and as you perform well, you score points. And there's, I think, 20 drivers that make it in or something like that to the playoffs. Reload me. Let's do this right this time. Cancel the animation. Reload. Ooh, we didn't actually... Man, I feel like we did it fast enough there. A little bit of RNG. Okay, let's see. See the fadeaway? We did actually get... She should be targetable here twice in a row, maybe? Nope, not twice in a row, but we will go for a kill. Nice. Schluter is active. Nice. So you can make the playoffs by earning points, by, you know, getting a top 10 finish, or in, be, dirt, in the middle of a race, there's what's called stages. So each each race is broken up into three stages, and if... I already have a Hellwalker, by the way. Excuse me, pet. Excuse me? He's trying to tell me. Yeah, I appreciate that. Accuracy and handling, but... Queen's Call, 63,000 damage. That's our first one of the day. Maybe we do want accuracy. No, I'm not going to do it. So, yeah, you can you can make the playoffs by earning points in NASCAR, right? But another way to make the, the playoffs is to win a race. If you win any race in the NASCAR circuit, you automatically get a playoff bid. Okay, you automatically make it into the playoffs. Now, the playoffs are very, very competitive. They keep every two or three races they eliminate more drivers and until it's the final four and at the final four race in one final race to decide who the champion is um and even if you are eliminated from the playoffs you still race in those playoff races you just can't win the championship so th there's always a full field out there anyways uh, let's make sure we get a good shot here okay reload me fade away me to that halfway point reload Good. That was good. So even if even if you're not in the playoffs, you can still race. However, as long as you win one race during the season, you make the playoffs, right? I didn't have my bipod active. Bipod me. Good. I think I have my Schluter as well, so this should be quick. But what the, what that playoff structure incentivizes is what's called winning at all costs as long as you win you're in if you win the first race of the year you can chill the rest of the year and just save your car so that you save your team lots of money because every time you wreck your car wrecking wrecking a car like a super sports machine car costs a lot of money so like you can chill out play it safe go for top 10 finishes you don't have to go for number one but if win at all costs is the is the strategy guys are willing to race a little bit aggressive so over the weekend at richmond a driver by the name of austin dillon was winning most the race okay he was he was winning he had a great car on the day and he was doing very very well however at the very end of the race he got passed okay it was it was a bit of a, a cheeky situation where he really shouldn't have gotten patched passed there was a they had to go into overtime and it because of somebody wrecked on purpose basically but anyways he felt as though he he was the guy to win the race and that he was kind of being cheated out of it so on the final lap of the race this guy austin dillon takes it upon himself to not only wreck the guy who was in first but then while he was wrecking the guy in first someone else passed him and he wrecked that guy too so he wrecked joey logano and he wrecked denny hamlin in order to win the race 
so you win and you're in win at all costs and in, in the post-race interview he said you know it's been two years since we've had a car that could give us a chance to win so i felt like i, had, I did what i had to do and people were kind of up in arms like yeah you you kind of deserve the win but not like that well a lot of pressure went on the official nascar um the official like nat like kind of like the nfl like somehow they like the nfl dishes out fines and stuff nascar can also dish out punishments and i believe like one of the first or second times ever they didn't take away his win but they took away his playoff eligibility so i believe that even if he does win every race from here on out he cannot make the playoffs which is incredible like if that is i mean that's a big decision from nascar to say you know what you cannot make the playoffs because he basically he's a danger out there if he's gonna wreck two cars to get that win yeah i mean it's a pretty it's a pretty heinous thing to do to be honest with you let's activate my schluter here try to get my action skill back as quickly as possible reload me immunity phase kill one badass varket pod and then we get the kill so they took away austin dylan's playoff eligibility um insane decision hold on one second guys sneeze okay we're back and it's not the only thing oh let's see here splash damage assault rifle damage oh man that could be good i don't think it's better than my own although the splash damage could be really really good on a splash damage assault rifle i'm thinking about a splash damage assault rifle in my head right now soul render are there any more the, the monarch is not splash the it's not that many splash assault rifles leave it on the ground sorry Sorry about that one, but it stays in the ground. But it wasn't the only punishment that got dished out. There's even more to the story. So, the first driver, the driver that got wrecked first, Joey Logano, he was about to win the race, and Austin Dillon wrecked two drivers. The first driver he wrecked was Joey Logano. Now, Joe Logano, he's won, I think he's won a race already this year. He's already in the playoffs. He's also won two championships. So, He's a, he's a veteran experienced driver. Joey Logano, very upset because he had that race. Like he was in first place on the last lap and Dylan wrecked him on purpose. Um, and, I, and I'll go into in more detail how we know he wrecked him on purpose, but reload me. Let's, we gotta make sure we go hyper efficient here. So Joey Logano, clearly very upset. And so when all the drivers they're coming down pit road, right? The race is over. Now they're just getting back to their pit stalls so they can park their cars, get any quick maintenance done, and then head out for the day. So all the cars are, you know, in a line. They're orderly. They're they're getting back to their pit stalls. Joey Logano, not in the line. He is like someone on the shoulder of the highway in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, just going down the side. Driving his engine, super upset, going super fast down pit road. Wow, no Schluter active there, I guess. Um, very upset and right in front of him on pit road was austin dylan's family wife kids were there a whole bunch of other people were there did i did that go up there we go and he almost runs them over like they had to jump out of the way the he almost ran them over now nascar has come out and said that they need to do a better job of making sure that there's no no unnecessary personnel out there during a hot pit road but they still slapped a $50,000 fine to Joey Logano for his actions. And I mean, it was pretty dangerous what he was doing, to be honest with you. Like, I, like the, the drama is unreal in NASCAR. So people like, people always say, like, it's kind of like the, it's not Jeff Dunham, but it's, it's the, um, the, the puppeteer guy. What's the guy who does the puppeteer? Is it Jeff Dunham? I think it, it might be. Which, whichever guy does the, the puppets he has a bit where like oh nascar all they do is make left turns and it's like it's one it's not necessarily true they all they do is make left turns but for a lot of tracks yeah it all they do is make left turns but there is so many storylines and drama because now the next time the austin dylan and joey logano are next to each other like joey logano never got payback he never got to go up to 
Austin Dillon and fight him after the race because that happens quite often. He never got anything like right now. Austin Dillon got that win. Now, Austin Dillon, he got his playoff hopes dashed with the double wreck, but he, he basically he never got any sort of like physical um, repercussions from it. So there's a lot of drama out there on the racetrack. My favorite driver, Ross Chastain, has been in his fair share of drama. In fact, he got, I think it was last season, one of the a rookie driver came up and tried to fight him. And if, if Ross Chastain didn't get saved by one of the security personnel next to him, I think he would have gotten his world rocked. Ross Chastain got one punch off, and then before Noah Gragson could punch back, a security personnel came and uh, and broke it up. <laughs> and Ross is a little bit smaller than the other drivers in the track, so. He got his life saved. Yeah, anyway, so... But one more thing about Austin Dillon, and the reason why NASCAR, I think, was so... was so ready to, to give him the punishment they did, were just getting rid of his playoff eligibility, was because they had access to Dillon's in-car audio. So his in-car radio, they can listen into that stuff, okay? And there are a few people that, ha that can talk to a driver while they're racing. Number one is the crew chief. So the... Ooh, that's a super badass Varkipod, and my pet is not running to me right now. Ooh, okay, we got it. So go into fade away and, and finish this finish this one up. Here we go, Schluter active. Tyreen goes down. They have access to the in-car radio. Okay, so the, the crew chief has access. He's the one talking and strategizing. Oh, Queen's call, 60,000. Not that no, not too great. So the first person is the crew chief, and the second person is the spotter. The spotter is at the is up high on the track, and they and he is giving. Ooh, on action skill and melee damage is increased by 100% for a short time. Face puncher, sheesh. So the spotter's job is to tell you, okay, like oh, the 24 car is right behind you, or a lot of times what they will say is they will tell a driver when they are clear. So like when you're passing somebody. You want to get in front of them, but if you try to get in front of them too early, you can wreck. But a lot of times, what a, a, a spotter's job is to tell them, they'll, they'll say something like, you, they'll be like, door, bumper, clear, meaning you're passing their door, you're passing their bumper, and now you're clear, meaning you can jump in front of them. Well, during the last lap of the race, Austin Dillon's spotter was yelling for Dylan to wreck the other two drivers. He was telling, wreck him, wreck him, go down, wreck him. And then when he did, he screamed, hell yeah. Like, you, you a lot of times when you wreck somebody, you can say like, oh, I didn't see him there. I'd never meant to wreck the guy. But if your spotter is yelling for you to wreck him and then celebrating afterwards, like there's not a whole lot you can do as a crew chief, as a driver, as an owner to tell NASCAR like, yeah, we didn't mean to wreck those guys. Like, what's NASCAR supposed to do? Like, let's you, let you get away with just wrecking guys on purpose? Like, I think they do it a lot. Like, a lot of guys do wreck guys on purpose in the right moments, you know, for their careers, to, to further their careers along. But, I mean, that, that spotter, I think, cost Austin Dillon. Oh, Roman's call, 54,000. Okay. Mm, that's a Gamma Burst active Roman's call, though. 54,000. I think I will take. We're going to have to go... We're gonna have to go back and and oh queen's call 66,000 mine 69,000 sorry not quite good enough queen's call i think austin dylan spotter actually kind of cost austin dylan a chance at the playoffs like and that's that is tough that is tough so austin dylan no playoffs joey logano $50,000 fine. And the best news ever is that my boy, Ross Chastain, he does not have a win yet this season. And we're getting towards the end of the season. He does not have a win yet. He's won the, a cup races the last couple seasons. He actually won the last race of the year uh, last season. Usually the last race of the year is reserved for one of the playoff drivers to win it, like one of the final four to win it. But Ross Chastain kind of spoiled the party. It was the first time in the playoff format as it is that the championship driver did not win the last race of the season. So there was actually two burnouts happening because every time a, a driver wins, they do a burnout in the track for the fans. Because, you, I mean, you can't take the tires home with you after the race, so you got to burn them out. Uh, 
So uh, drivers do burnouts, and there were two burnouts happening at the same time. Uh, Ryan Blaney, the championship winner, and Ross Chastain, the guy who actually won the race. It was pretty interesting. Ross Chastain doesn't have a win yet this season, and he's on what I would say the bubble, right? He's just he was just barely outside the playoffs based on points, okay? But he was fighting for that last playoff spot. Well, now that Austin Dillon is kicked out of the playoffs, that puts Ross Chastain tied for the final playoff spot. Let's go! So, so basically what I'm trying to say is Austin Dillon's spotter is officially on Team Ross Chastain, and I couldn't be happier about it. That's my dude. We, we are going for the playoffs this season. That being said, Ross has to drive very quickly, but he got a top five finish at Richmond, so... And he's racing well. It's just it, it came down to uh, it came down to people making mistakes. And you know NASCAR is a very very drama filled sport. Um, it's it's got the most drama I think of any sport I have seen because you know these cars are moving at very fast speeds. It's extremely dangerous. And you you couple that with individual actions costing people so much in their career that. You know, these personalities they clash these guys are all you want to talk about alpha dogs i mean these guys are these guys are insane with it but it's just a really fun sport to watch and a fun sport to be a part of and i'm actually on september 15th a month from when i'm recording this video not to date the video but here we are dating the video I'm actually going to Watkins Glen. It's it's the the I think the closest NASCAR track to where I currently am in Central New York. We're going. My brother and I. When my brother got my brother, and my dad and I tickets and garage passes to go to Watkins Glen and watch the race with yeah with basically backs backstage passes. I'm I'm so excited. I'm gonna be able to meet Ross Chastain. Hopefully, I'm not getting my hopes up too much. He might not be there or whatever, but. We're going to be going to a playoff race at Watkins Glen, which is amazing. And Watkins Glen, uh, kind of fittingly, is one of the tracks in NASCAR that isn't all left turns. It's, it's called a road course. It's got rights, it's got lefts, it's got uphills, it's got downhills. And I, last summer, I, I, yeah, last summer actually I ran a 5K um, at Watkins Glen. So that was pretty fun. That was pretty fun. Okay, we're gonna do two more runs here. Let's get up. We're gonna do our 100 runs and then we're gonna call it and see how we do at 100 runs. Hopefully, we can get our King's Call. We have not gotten a single King's Call. Okay, re roll. By re roll, I mean enter fadeaway. Reload me. I don't think I did it fast enough there. No, I didn't. Okay. But honestly, I, I really do think that even if we are messing it up a little bit, we're still doing this relatively efficiently. Make sure we aim down sight. I gotta make sure to do that. Get away me. It should become targetable right away here. Yep. I see we're learning. We're learning pretty quickly. Where's that immunity phase? Oh no, don't walk the edge of this. Don't walk to the edge. Don't walk to the edge. Don't walk to the edge. Not good. No. Stop. Stop! She's gonna go all the way to the edge, isn't she? Honestly, is it even worth it? Yeah, that's... I kind of like going through this because it's kind of like I'm being punished for, for misplaying. I, I should have killed her way faster than I did, so... Go ahead and hop. So yeah, that's your... That's your... Your New York Yankees and your... Your NASCAR breakdowns. I know nobody asked for it, but hey, guess what? We're here. No Schluter active. Oh, maybe I did have Schluter active. Cool. Nemesis. Flood. Red Fang. Okay. Shredifier. All right. Close out. All right. This is our, officially, this is our 100th run. This is the one. This is the run. Let's get let's get a max efficiency run here. Come on now. Hop down. Fade away me. Aim down sight. There we go. Run to the side. Get ready. Reload me. 
Fade away me. Come on, we did it fast enough. We did it fast enough here. There we go. Very quick that time. Very quick. Got some attacks. Get our fadeaway back. Oh, we didn't get our fadeaway back. Shoot. This is going to be a little bit awkward here, I think. Yeah, we might have to go through one more. One more. Yeah. At least, at least he's not walking to the edge. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Get rid of that enemy right there. I might have to enter fadeaway here. I have much looter active. Wasn't max efficiency, but we got it done. All right, come on now. 100 kills. You know I've done 100 kills. You have to reward me now, right? Nice little hellwalker there. It's like, this is your reward, a hellwalker. Okay, looks like no king's call. So, hey, that's going to be the end of this video. I had a really great time. Thank you all for hanging out with me as I you know, rant about sports and... That's kind of like what Borderlands is all about. You know, you, you come in here, you you farm some enemies, you sometimes put stuff on the side monitor. I Listen, if I'm on your side monitor, that's exactly where I want to be. So thank you very much for, for hanging out with me. If you enjoyed, hit the like button, subscribe to see more videos like this one. And I will see you all when we start our next runs. Bye.